we've uh, had a kind of a unique uh, opportunity to be able to watch a movie. Uh, I think a lot of the entertainment that's out there has been uh, purely, uh, I would say, for most truthful observations to be a waste of time. They're there just to occupy people's mind with things uh, that really have no value. But occasionally there are movies that do give clues. Uh, there's movies like Shawshank Redemption, uh, which have a lot of clues in the movies regarding how our system actually operates and how deadly it can really be to someone if they do not know the law. And in a, a movie that we've uh, watched several times, which is called An Innocent Man, and we're not here plugging the movie on the sense of commerce, we're just saying that if you have a chance to watch the movie, there's an interesting scenario in this. Because of the title being An Innocent Man, our society does not really, it does not work on that idea or that premise at all. And in fact, uh, whether it's as simple as something with a traffic ticket, uh, there's either guilty or not guilty, but certainly not the designation innocent. And we're not gonna get into uh, a debate on whether not guilty really implies innocence, because it would be much simpler just to say innocent. But because in our society we operate under civil law, under the idea that we carry the automatic obligation to represent a title, and therefore if we fail, we're automatically guilty anyways because we're carrying the name, and therefore we hold full surety responsibility for it. And if you understand scripturally, um, we've been warned about being surety for another, uh, that we would surely uh, be, uh, have a very negative effect for being that surety. Uh, the fact that a man would uh, even think of being surety for someone else in the idea of his imperfection already uh, would make no sense. So therefore, how could a sinful man be surety for another? Only Christ was designated as that. And therefore, he smarted for us. Um, and therefore, our, our names under our Christian identity deal with grace, not legal. In the Innocent Man video, um, this actor uh, that is the prime character in the movie uh, was arrested falsely and set up by a very, very corrupt policing system at the time in the movie. And in the movie, he eventually has to meet with what is going to be his counsel, or his legal advice to deal with the charges that were automatically laid against him on the premise he was actually guilty. And so in the movie, the commentary uh, given by the lawyer while he sat in his office was quite unique and we're actually at the end of this video going to provide you the clip from the movie so you can understand but this is the gist of the system that you operate in every day. It means this could happen at any time to anybody. And the fact that it could happen doesn't mean it will not happen. And the fact that the premise of our legal system operates in this manner should make you in itself realize that we're in a lottery gambling of what or what may not happen uh, to us in this legal system. So, in the movie, the innocent man, so to speak, of course, who is actually guilty until proven innocent, um, was told by the lawyer uh, a very, very saddened uh, message. And he said, it isn't a matter or a question of innocence or guilt. It's about persuasion, maneuvering. The appearance of guilt. It doesn't matter that it's all false. Don't you understand? And that's what was said to the man who had been charged. Now, if you can sit with that and think that system is the best that we have, and that you're okay with that, and you would rather participate than be a non-participant, which most people don't realize they have the ability to be one or the other. Unfortunately, the majority of the world have decided to be participants, not understanding the law, and many other things that go with the law, being a civilian, 
a participant that is armed and is causing the largest damage worldwide to the system, whether it be in behavior that we're seeing the ramifications of or just based on the idea of doing the bookkeeping on the commerce that's going on. But people are not aware of what is happening. So we hope you watch this clip in this movie, Innocent Man, which should clarify uh, any idea that you feel secure in the system that you're involved in. Sorry. I'm sorry. Are you all right? Didn't do anything to you, did they? What happened? They said you had drugs and a gun and that you shot at the police? How could I shoot anybody? They broke in, Kate. But how could they break in and shoot you in our own house? I mean, I why? I don't know. I don't know. They're lying, and I gotta find out why. I got a lawyer, and he's really good. How'd you raise the bail money? I had to use our savings. We gotta get Yvonne this thing worked out, out fast. I don't know. It's gotta be some kind of mistake. I mean, there's no reason for them well, to... Well, how could anybody make like a mistake like that? How could they just break into our house and shoot me? It's okay. It's gonna work out somehow. I'm gonna find the answers. They've got two decorated police officers sticking to the same story. They've got a witness who's willing to testify that you sold him they drugs. Got a witness? From where? The Twilight Zone? Look, they made a mistake and they're making up a story to save themselves. This old marijuana conviction doesn't help us? Mr. Feldman, I was at a rock concert. I was 18 years old. Jimmy, you're going to trial. Now, the evidence presented at the hearing was found substantial enough to warrant that. But the prosecution has approached me with a deal. I think you should consider this. A deal? That means I plead guilty, right? Why should I do that? Because in exchange for pleading guilty to the possession charge, it would be changed to a misdemeanor. And the assault would be changed to reckless endangerment. You'd probably do six months, maybe a year, at an honor ranch, strictly minimum security. An honor ranch? Six months on an honor ranch? I'm not going to jail for six seconds. I'm not going to leave Kate. Look, Mr. Feldman, I'd lose my job. I'm not going to have my whole life turned upside down because some police didn't do their jobs right. Now, if Jimmy went to trial and they found him guilty, what, what's the worst that they could do to him? If the judge ordered the terms to run consecutively, <laughs> he could go to prison for 12 years. 12 years? That's insane. This isn't a question of innocence or guilt. It's about persuasion, maneuvering, the appearance of guilt. It doesn't matter that it's all false. Do you understand? No, we don't. What about the truth? I just won't confess to something I didn't do. That's just not right. Look, you still have to be proven guilty in this country before they throw you into prison. Mr. Feldman, you have to understand something here. Jimmy and I love each other. We have a life together. Why would I jeopardize all that to sell dope or shoot policemen? 